Alrighty, you're on video number three, you made it. Well, hopefully you made it. So uh, we are discussing how to basically build a presentation from scratch using Excel VBA along with the PowerPoint object model. And so in our previous video, we really kind of started building the main script that would actually be doing the exporting. So taking the objects from our workbook and copying them over to a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, really, the first portion was just talking about the object library, declaring our variables, and then we got into actually, you know, how, how do we go about either grabbing the active instance of PowerPoint, or if that active instance isn't there, how do we create a new presentation from scratch? So now that we've at least validated that we can get the PowerPoint application, and if it's not there, we can create a new instance and then add a presentation to our particular PowerPoint application. We're now gonna move into the next topic, which is basically looping through this table and grabbing the different rows and their values. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you that I do have some charts, as you can tell. So I have a uh, list object, you can see right here, I have a chart, same here, I have a table and I have another chart. And for just simplicity's sake, I'm going to say we want to export our charts. So we'll put our chart objects just like that. You can see them like so. In this situation, I want sales to go on slide one, cost to go on slide two. And then these are the dimensions. I want chart one to be linked. I want chart two to not be linked. And then these are the ones that I want to be the names as well. Now, I will be telling you, I am making it very specific. I'm always assuming we want an OLE object. You don't technically have to do that. You could write this in such a way where either it can be another object or another paste type, or you could even add another column if you wanted to and let the, you know, the user choose basically. So from here, we've added our presentation. Let's start going through and looping through the table. So loop through each row in the table. Fun. For each Excel table row in Excel table, I'm gonna be very specific here, list columns, do object, data body range. Now, some people will ask me, Alex, there's a list row collection, why don't you use that? Well, I tried using that. For whatever reason, it's skipping the first row. I don't know why. For some reason, the table row collection, it is including the header, but then it's skipping the first row, which is weird because if you look at the table object, there's literally a property that returns just the header row. So I don't know why it's including that one and why it's skipping it as well. So I don't have really a good answer. My solution for the time being was just, let's loop through the first column and then just do offsetting. That seemed to work just as fine and it didn't seem to impact speed that much either. So I'm gonna stick with this methodology. If you get it working on your system, by all means, go along with it. I think that's probably the more intuitive approach, but for my sake, I have to kind of do it like this. So the first thing I need to do is grab the object field, so basically the value in this drop-down section right here. So that's nothing too crazy, that's just a value. So I'm gonna set my object field string equal to my table row, and then I'm gonna do the value property. And then from here, um, if I want, I could just print this out so I can see it. I'm gonna do a council log basically. We'll do debug print exporting object. And then we'll do a space plus sign, and then we'll do the object field split the field. So I'm going to say object field parts, set that equal to the split function, pass through the field, specify the delimiter. Bam, just like that. Remember, when you call the split function, you get an array back of the different parts. From here, I'm going to basically select each item from that array. So grab the object name, that should be the first element in the name, in the array, not in the name. So object 
field parts. That should be the first one. So we'll start at zero, start at zero. Grab the object sheet location. Object sheet equals object field parts number one. And then finally, grab the object type. Object type equals object field parts number two. Okay, so we're looping through it. We got our field, we got all the different parts. Then what? I would say first things first, let's grab the sheet because that's where the object that we want to copy is at. So let's grab the sheet. So I'm going to set the Excel sheet equal to the Excel book worksheets, not work identity. Work sheets collection. From here, I'm going to pass through that object sheet variable that I defined. For pasting and copying purposes, remember we're copying from Excel to PowerPoint. We know there's a lot of bugs. The safest thing to do is activate the sheet first to make sure you can adequately copy the object. Sometimes you don't need to do this. Sometimes you do need to do this. Again, when it comes to copying from Excel to PowerPoint, again, there's a lot of extra steps where you're going, why are you doing that? That's not really necessary. It's basically to minimize the chance of that bug happening. This is one of those things that helps minimize the chance of that bug happening is making sure you actually have the sheet in the active window. Don't ask me why, it just seems to reduce the chances. So from here, grab the object. How do we do that? Well, remember, we already have the object type. So we're gonna say if object type equals list object, then, and then we're gonna do else if object type equals chart object, then, and then end if. So I'm not going to handle any other situation but besides these two. So if it's a chart object, copy it. So we're going to set our Excel table object equal to our Excel sheet. I'm going to go into the list objects collection. I'm going to go into the item uh, method and then do the object name. Now you might be asking, why don't you just do list objects like so, like this, right? That one seemed to cause some issues. <laughs> I'll try it again. Maybe I had missed something. Uh, for whatever reason, it really didn't like when I passed through that string for some reason. But I'll try it again. But if you, that doesn't work, this seemed to work fine with me, which was just doing the item method. Again, I don't know why you should do that, but apparently it doesn't like it. So we're going to take our table object. There is a range property. And we're going to call, call that copy method to copy the range. We're going to do the same thing with the chart. Just a little bit more code. Excel chart object equals Excel sheet. There is a chart objects collection. This one, no problem. This one seemed to work fine. So we'll take that Excel chart object. We will do the chart, chart area, and then copy. This again seems to reduce the chance of having that clipboard error. Don't go chart and then copy, do chart, then chart area, then copy. That seems to work a little bit more uh, quicker. Then additionally, pause the Excel application to make sure the data makes it into the clipboard. So application, and then I'm going to do the wait method, do now plus hash, hash sign 12, zero, zero, colon, zero, one AM, and then bam. Basically, wait one second. That's all that line is doing. It's just say wait one second, and then so on. Then do another council log. We're going to say debug print, and then adding slide colon, uh, quote, plus, and then convert to string, uh, table row, sorry, Excel table row, call that offset. We're going to go zero, one column to the right, grab that value, grab that value, and then just council log it. And then from here, 
add the slide to the presentation. So take the uh, PPT slide object, set that equal to PPT pres, go into the slides collection, do add, not add slide, add, and then do uh, Excel table row dot offset zero comma one dot value. And then we need a layout in this situation. I want PPT or sorry, PP layout title only. So I only want a title on the slide. Obviously this is something where if you wanted to, you could have another column that has the enumeration values for the slide type as well. So this basically would just extend the kind of the framework I'm giving you and uh, add it where they could then specify the slide layout as well. That would probably be something I could see people wanting. So, and then uh, paste the shape to the slide. So I'm gonna set, or sorry, no, not this one, PPT slide dot shapes dot paste special data type equals PP paste OLE object link. So do we want it linked? Well, it depends what's in the table. So I'm going to take that table row. I'm going to do offset again. This one is six columns over to the right. And then this is the value as well. So that will paste it, and if it needs to be linked, it will be linked. Then from here, change the slide title, set the PPT slide. We're gonna go into the shapes collection. It should be the first shape, text frame, text range. Again, this should equal what is over in the final column, which is seven columns to the right, and we want that value. So that will change the slide title. And then finally, grab the shape that we just pasted. So set PPT shape equal to PPT slide dot shapes. And then it's going to be PPT slide shapes count. So basically, it should be the last shape that is in the collection. So the easiest way to grab it is just to simply count how many you have, and that should reference it. And then from here, resize the shape. So I'm going to set the PPT shape dot top equal to Excel table row offset, and then it's going to be a zero two dot value. And then basically I'm repeating this just for the different dimensions. So in this situation, it's going to be width, then it's going to be left, and then it's going to be height. And you guessed it, each one of these is just one after the other. Okay, and with that, that basically is all the code. So we're going to try and run it and see what happens, but I'm going to first compile it, see what happens. And... Did I, oh, my bad. I made this a string. This should have been a variant. My apologies. Let's try again. Okay, so that looks like it was the only one. That's good. Very important that this is a variant, not a string. Let's run it. Okay, so other than the fact that mentions are just wildly out of whack. It looks like it worked. So this is not linked. This is linked. Perfect. So it looked like it worked wonderfully. So that's linked. That's not linked. That's perfect. So in this situation, we did charts. What if I wanted to do a table? Let's do a table. Let's do a list object. And then from here, you can see it's also doing our debugging like we asked. Now in this situation, we got this ugly table. I'm just kidding, it's not too ugly. It's, it's okay. It's not too ugly, but it's okay. But now we can see it, it works with this. 
and let's be fancy and oh i don't know we'll copy this down here and oh you know i don't know and we'll change this to this wonderful green color maybe we'll do a green one but you know what we got to update our object drop down so we'll take this and oh look there's another one in here cost table five and then uh we'll run it again and hopefully it still works <clears throat> wonderful that looks good too and look at that no clipboard errors <laughs> someone's looking down upon us usually there's a clipboard error and you can see you know some of these you know work somewhat um, the thing with OLE objects, especially the linked ones, you do have to be a little bit careful because I noticed that even if you try setting these, for whatever reason, the link seems to like, I don't know what it is. It seems to like override it or something like that. Um, I'm going to try it again. Let's just see maybe if it changes the dimensions. I have like five presentations open now. Okay, so that looks a lot better, but you can also kind of tell you know, it's not perfectly dimensioned. It really does depend if it's an OLE object and then if it's linked, not linked, you know, stuff like that. So don't be surprised if it never looks exactly like you expect it, especially with the linked ones. I've noticed they can kind of be a little bit weird. But <clears throat> other than that, I would say it looks pretty good. And so obviously if I do it like so, it should put everything in the clipboard as well. But yeah, pretty interesting stuff. I think this is pretty neat for the most part. However, that does conclude the video. So if you have any final questions about this wonderful little series, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, um, you know, people want to see it with like Word documents, even Publisher, for example, since we're on that little topic, um, maybe even Outlook or maybe a one size fits all. What if we want to do everybody, right? So if you'd like to see maybe a video on that, you know, feel free to just leave something in the comments letting me know, and then I'll start writing that. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.